Hey folks, Mangrel here. And in this video, we're taking our built frame. This is the Luminaire QAVS Mini three inch frame. And we're putting in all of our electronics. So our CADEX Vista, our speed control, flight control, all that stuff is gonna go into this frame. In our last video, link up here, and make sure to check out our playlist. We ended up building this frame, so we had a little bit of difficulty understanding the manual and uh, the instructions, but we managed to get it all put together. And you can notice that since then, we've gone through all the screws, we've loctited, tightened, and, and made sure everything was good. And we've also put in our two stacks here. So the first piece, which is the front stack, this is a 20 by 20. And what you'll notice is these are slotted. So you push the screws right to the very top, that gives you the 20 by 20. So we've used our 20 millimeter screws that came with the frame kit. We put that in place. And then we've also put in our rear stack here. This is for the Canix Vista. And here we use the stack screws that came with the iFlight stack. They're a little bit uh, too long, but this is the best I could find. And these are also 20 millimeter screws. In terms of electronics, we're gonna put in the same exact electronics that came off of our iFlight DC3. So this is the iFlight uh, success stack. This is the speed control. And we've got all the conformal coding on there already. And in terms of the flight controller and the VTX, we've got our CADEX Vista here, and we were supposed to use the Nebula Pro camera, but we ended up using that camera for our HD1 slam build. And it does look like the regular camera for the DJI system does fit in this frame. But rather than going out and spending $50, $60 on a new camera, we'll just use this guy here for now. And then the weight savings is pretty minimal, you know, five, six grams here. So it'll work fine and, and maybe down the road we'll go ahead and you know, lighten up the Vista by removing all these covers, put a Nebula Pro, but for now I think we're good. The only thing that we did change is we went with the shorter cable. So this is the uh, 80 millimeter cable here rather than the uh, 120 and I'll link you up here to a video of how to do that. But this length of cable is perfect for this frame. And then here is our flight controller. And again, this is just straight off of our iFlight DC3. So all the wiring, everything seems to be the perfect length. And then motor wise, we've got these iFlight Zing motors. They're the 1404, 4600 kV. And these again came off the DC3 build. We will have a bit of an issue with these antenna, oh, they're not antenna, with these uh, wires here, the motor wires. Because of the dead cat style on the DC3, I think they're gonna be a little bit too short, so we'll have to lengthen these cables a little bit. And then finally for the antenna, we've got our TrueRC Singularity antenna. And the way that this frame is designed, the antenna mount has quite a large hole, and this hole is designed more around the Vista antenna. So if you're using the Vista antenna, it'll stick in this hole pretty well, nice and, nice and firm. But if you're using an antenna like this, which has a fairly thin wire, you have to create some kind of sleeve. And what we did here is we took an antenna tube, we cut along the antenna tube, and then we used that to spread it open and put in the cable. So this makes the cable a little bit thicker and then it'll fit through just fine. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and take the top plate off. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and install our speed control. And we can tell that the capacitor is a little bit too high because it's going past the top of our standoff. Yeah, so we'll have to reposition that a little bit. And then if we check the motor cables, yeah, they're 100% they're too short. The back motors should be okay. Oh yeah, the back motors are perfectly fine. 
We got the motor wire on the first motor extended and usually when I shorten the wires, I do keep the excess and looks like this is perfect because now we're good. All right, and the second motor is done too. Okay, so we got this rearranged. Pretty much we kept the same layout. Negative comes at the bottom, positive at the top. We moved a little bit further in and then we shortened the leads on the capacitor. So now it should fit nicely. The first motor is done, so pretty much we just came around here and then looped it around these studs. We'll do exact same thing for the other three motors and then we'll be right back. We got all the motor wires soldered up, so we're ready for the next step. And here's how it looks. All right, folks, we gotta pause for one second here. If you just saw the ESC being installed in its typical orientation, along with the motor wires being wrapped on the inside of the stack of screws that actually does not work on this frame the stack is too close together and the frame is uh, too rear heavy so it's got you know too, too much junk in the trunk and because of that we have to flip the speed controller around so that the back is actually the front along with wiring it uh, the way we have here so we'll make some tweaks to our beta flight to support this configuration but save yourself some trouble and wire it this way from the very beginning next we want to take our flight controller and our Vista, and this is already all connected, it's soldered ready to go. And we want to get it in here. And we want to pass the camera cable underneath the ESC, so we'll have to remove the motors. Now let's get the motor screws back in. Just one screw should be fine. Okay, so let's check our routing here. So that's good. That's good, that's good. We'll push the camera cable to the other side of this connector. So over here. Okay, let's do a quick smoke check before we assemble it. Yeah, that's good. Now we can put our stack nuts on there. Okay. 
Last piece should be the antenna, and because this is so close to the antenna mount, let's try taking off the standoffs. So we'll pass this through. And then I think we'll have to install this and then mount this. Sometimes I find that uh, it's easier to open this screw up first and then mount this, then tighten the screw. Okay, so now we just have to get this positioned. There we go. We can reinstall our standoff screws. And install the top deck. All right, there we go. Now, before we get too much further, let's do a quick weigh. So 143, we don't have props, we're missing a couple of screws, no battery pad. Let's add in our battery. 215, yeah, so we have quite a lot of space between uh, 215 and 215, so even with a couple of screws, with battery pad, uh, propellers, probably I'm guessing will be around like that two, 230 or so. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, now we can go back to the motors, we can put the rest of the motor screws in. And then we need some Loctite as well. Every build has a point where you really second guess yourself and think about, did I position everything the way that I should have? And this is the exact moment when that happened on the QAVS Mini. Usually the battery would be positioned in the middle, but this frame is just so rear biased that the battery has to be so far forward and that led to some tweaks and changes having to be made. And here's ultimately how it looks. And you'll notice that we did have to flip around the flight controller. And that's because when we flipped around the speed controller, the connector was too far away. And the stack does not come with a cable long enough to support that distance. So one negative here is that our USB is on opposite sides between the Vista and the flight controller, but our capacitors at the front, a lot of space. And this works perfectly. We'll just make a couple of little tweaks in our software to support this, but otherwise all good. Because we flipped around both our flight controller and our speed controller, we're gonna have to make some tweaks in beta flight. And this is very similar to the tweaks we had to make for our HD1. So once we come in here to beta flight, first thing we wanna do is we wanna remap our motors because motor one is no longer motor one. And the easiest way to do that is to come under the CLI and under here, we can go pound, oh, we can go uh, resources. Oh, pound resources. Repo resource, yeah, okay. So we go uh, resource, and over here, we can see what the current motor mapping is. So it says number one is C08, two, C06, and so forth. So what you wanna do is you wanna look at your board and see where is motor one actually now. So when I look at this, motor one actually says it's connected to motor four so we know that we need to make this motor one become c07 instead of c08 so i've already gone through this and done the remapping so here's what it should be and what we want to do is go ahead and free up these motor pins first so we'll go ahead and type in none 
So let's freeze it up. Then we'll do the same thing for number two, same thing for number three, and the same thing for number four. Now that they're all freed up, we can go ahead and assign our new mapping. We'll stick this in here. We'll say save. It'll do a restart. Okay, so now we should be good to go. Now the other issue we have is we flipped around our flight controller. So now when I move it forward, it actually moves backwards. So it's, it's kind of all um, upside down now. Well, I guess not upside down, but it's, it's all rotated. So forward is actually backwards, backwards is forward. And, and that's fine. So all we need to do is go under our configuration. And under the configuration, we see that there is a yaw degree. So what we want to do is we want to play with this number till we get something that actually fixes our issue. So by default, this is minus 90. So let's try zero. Okay, so now it's even worse because forward is actually sideways. Let's try 90. Yeah, perfect. Okay, good. So forwards, forwards, backwards, backwards, left, right. Excellent. So now all we have to do is our typical new quad procedure. So we want to go ahead and make sure that the mortars are all turning in the right direction, um, make sure that everything seems to work okay. So all that is typical stuff that we do anyway. So I'm not going to walk you through all those steps. That's pretty normal and there are lots of videos already out there on that. And here is the frame I'll put together. And you'll notice that the battery is very, very forward. So definitely not in the middle of the frame as you typically would see, but that's how we were able to get the proper center of gravity. So right now as I'm holding it, you can see it's got very good center of gravity. And that's what really threw the whole uh, build off track initially. But otherwise, looks very, very good. And our initial concern of using the DJI camera was, was really not a concern. This camera fits in here perfectly. And we did break the cardinal rule and we used a iFlight battery strap on a Lumineer frame, but this battery strap just fits so much better. So there you have it. The iFlight, no, it's not iFlight. See, I told you the battery strap throws people off. <laughs> it's not iFlight, it's a Lumineer QAVS frame. Great frame, I'm looking forward to flying this a lot. So I'll leave you with a maiden flight video. It's just the first flight. Uh, we are in the middle of winter, but at least it'll give you a flavor of how it looks, especially with the props being in view. So make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. We'll be having more videos on this along with some tuning once the weather warms up. Well, we almost forgot to weigh it. That's the whole point of this video. We need to make sure that it's under 250 grams. So let's see. So it was 215 without the propellers, without some of the screws. And I said, I think it'll be around 230 was my guess. Let's see, how close was I? <laughs> okay, honestly, there was no cheating whatsoever. I, I had no idea what it would be in the final product, but 230, now yours may be an extra two grams because this antenna here, the True RC, is uh, two grams lighter than the Vista. But look at that, 230 we still have 20 grams before hitting the limit of the 250. So this is an amazing build. Where are my two thumbs? Two thumbs, very happy. Here's the first flight of the frame. These are all in stock settings with beta flight 4.2. So we have stock PIDs, stock filter settings. So really just the first flight to see what's really going on and how well does it handle. And first impressions are, are very positive. So coming from the DC3 to the QAVS Mini, it just flies so much better and it seems a lot more consistent. And we spend a lot of time to set up and get the DC3 flying the way that you've seen in prior videos. And this is flying, I'd say probably 80% um, of the same performance right out of the box uh, stock. And definitely there's still some weirdness. We have some you know, wobbles, we have some prop wash, some kind of weird handling behavior. And I expect to be able to tune and tweak those out. 
And also, even though this is not a dead cat style frame, you only see the tips of the propellers in view, which really does not take away from the flying experience. So all in all, for first flight, that this was great, and we'll continue tweaking and tuning as the weather gets better. We are in the middle of winter right now. But otherwise, yeah, pretty happy with this.